Hi, welcome back to CS170. Uh, we're here to continue on with the week three uh, material. Uh, before I do that, I just want to go through a couple of things. So here, we're back in modules, and I'm going back here to the reference sheet. So you remember I was saying like the HTML tags reference sheet. <clears throat> I'm thinking for this week, for the extra credit assignment, I can uh, just basically give you something that would be useful uh, for future reference. So number one, you have the basic HTML structure. Number two, uh, you have these tags here. Um, so you remember uh, before we have this uh, reference to the URL and the link name. Um, this is uh, something I didn't, I don't remember covering this, but it's fairly straightforward. Just put this in here like this, um, and then put a picture in there, and I'll show you that in a second. And then here's all your text formatting uh, and some formatting here. Uh, lists and tables, we'll pretty much leave these until next week. There's something for advanced. Um, HTML and then their style sheets. Don't worry about that for now. We'll pick that up for next week. Uh, so for now, just do something simple. Just pick up on these guys here. Do uh, H, you know, go through H1 to H6. I just show all of that um, and put it into here, right? So I already did something here. So you can see H1, H2, H3, uh, your P. Just do all of this. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward to set all of this up. This just gives you some practice. I know you've been doing, uh, you know, you'll be doing this in recitation and some other areas, but I figure you can do this pretty quickly. Now back to the point I was saying about um, the image source. <clears throat> so let me copy and paste this guy here. And I'll put it right here. <clears throat> okay, so there's nothing here. That's why it shows like this little uh, image here, which is nothing, right? So it's not going to find anything here. Uh, but you can go anywhere. I just kind of found a random picture like this. Um, so you can do a search, find a picture, uh, just copy that, come over here, and basically by pasting into here, you're listing out the full file path. So you remember we we're talking about the absolute reference. Uh, and relative reference. So this would be the absolute. So I have the whole path laid out here. And you see the picture here. So it pops up right away. Okay. Um, and the other thing I forgot to mention from the last class um, is this HTML checker, right? So the first one is this validator uh, W3. Uh, there's a number of things on W3 that's good reference. You remember last, uh, last time I mentioned that to you also. Um, so you go for the text input, just paste this in here, you hit check, <coughs> and it just gives you like a little warning. It just tells you that <coughs> you can add a language uh, attribute to this. Uh, we haven't really taught that, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, I think you setting up with the uh, car set UTFA is good enough. Um, but you know, if you made some, uh, some error here, this might catch some of it. Okay, uh, so something you want to play around with, uh, this will come in handy when you go into uh, some of your HTML assignments later on. Uh, and like I said, you know, there's not too many tags that we're talking about, so if you want to put that in here, uh, I'm going to minus out this zoom a little bit. Okay, so if you want to just put your stuff in here uh, <clears throat> for extra credit, just show me a screenshot uh, showing all of this that shows me on the left side the HTML on the right side uh, the output from that uh, and try to use all of the tags on the reference sheet up to lists. Uh, for next week we'll be doing lists, tables, um, and the CSS style sheets uh, so you can feel free to put those in for next week uh, but for this week uh, extra credit I think this should be good to, to put in uh, and then I'll cover something else in, in one of my clips for as part of extra credit, and then we should be good to go. All right, so send me uh, any questions you might have, um, and 
uh, hopefully this shouldn't be too hard for you to put out and this is like some good reference when you do your other HTML assignments to be able to uh, look at some example stuff that you've done uh, and see how it maps to uh, the display uh, and then being able to use this HTML checker uh, if you get some good practice with that uh, that should be helpful for you for your assignments okay so let me go back to modules Okay, so week three. Oops, uh, that's not what I wanted. Go back to here. Where are my uh, week three resources? back in on this again. Alright. Alright, so we I just touched up on this uh, HTML uh, validation. Um, so we're up to here, chapter 3 now, the basics of networking. Uh, I'll hit that in a second. And that's what we're going to cover. I might split this up into two lectures. Uh, and then you have chapter 5 here. Okay, so let's flip over to here, Networking, Chapter 3. Um, <clears throat> so I think for this lecture, we're going to cover pretty much up to here, client-server structure. Then we'll have another lecture to cover IP addresses, domain servers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, then we'll pick up this stuff right here on the right. All right. Let's see how far we can go here. All right, so communication types. Uh, you're probably familiar with this. We talk about our lectures being synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, the sections that I'm covering are asynchronous lectures. Uh, that means we're not going to be in the same uh, lecture uh, together. Uh, I'll be recording my lectures. Uh, you might communicate back to me. Um, in, in our case, I've been mostly using email. Um, so although we do, I do want to encourage uh, some synchronous uh, communication uh, if it's convenient to your time zone um, you know just uh, send some send me something we'll have synchronous connection but uh, really for our class we're asynchronous and so uh, synchronous is exactly what they're saying you're both active at the same time going back and forth just like a phone call uh, asynchronous uh, you're you're sending something and you might uh, get some response at some later point in time and it can go back and forth Okay, so it's not at the same time. Um, so that's the general definition of synchronous and asynchronous. Alright, so there's a couple of different ways we can look at uh, communication transmission. So one is broadcast. So the example there would be, uh, let's say, a radio station where you send something out and it just goes out to uh, everybody. Right? It doesn't really... Uh, care uh, it's just all over the place if you have a receiver you'll pick it up okay now multicast um, is kind of similar but it's a little bit more specific so uh, similar to broadcast but it's a little bit more specific where uh, you're sending out a message to let's say a group of people right they're subscribed to you right so it could be like it'd be a, a message to a, a group of followers or a forum uh, that is specifically uh, listening to your broadcast. Uh, so that's what is uh, multicast. Um, point to point, that's where you just pick up a phone, let's say, as one example, talking to someone else, uh, one to one. Right? So directly point to point, uh, you're making a communication there. Um, so these are the three general types of communications. Okay, so when we're talking about the internet, uh, generally we're talking about point-to-point -point communication, asynchronous, okay, um, and 
because the response uh, is fast enough, uh, you can say it's mimicking uh, synchronous communication. So, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, uh, let's say a Skype call or some other, uh, you know, voice over IP. Um, it feels like it's a synchronous communication, uh, but that's only because the messages are going back and forth uh, fast enough. So it simulates a, a synchronous uh, communication, uh, but essentially it is asynchronous. Okay. Uh, multicasting, uh, again, like what I was saying before, in, in terms of a, a forum, uh, in this case, they're talking about a chat room. Uh, so you're talking, you're sending something out, uh, and it's going to a more select group of people who's interested in what you're talking about. Um, so it's almost like I publish something and then there's people who are subscribing to my message. Okay. Um, and then the other point uh, example is like doing broadcasting. So you can post a video that's accessed by everyone. Um, so it's a form of broadcasting uh, similar to uh, radio or television. Some, something like maybe uh, posting out to YouTube or something like that. All right, so this is uh, talking about tracking a package. Um, we'll get into a little bit of this as we go into networks. Uh, so basically you start off from one point and it's making these different hops until you get to a destination, right? Um, so you can think of like traffic going over the internet in a similar type of way. Okay, so here you have your computer uh, and then you have your server, your web server. Um, so along the way, as you're exchanging messages back and forth, there's any number of servers uh, in between. You're making hops from one server to the next one. So you see this red line here, it can travel this particular path. It can travel any number of paths, but this is one path uh, that it could take and this is <clears throat> uh, from an internet standpoint uh, they're talking in terms of internet packets right so you have a packet of information that goes like this uh, so one particular message can actually have many different packets uh, multiple packets and I'll get into that in a second all right there's another idea here it's talking about client server okay so you have the server computer up here a client computer could be something like your computer um, and it's providing services right so maybe you're trying to place an order to Amazon or something like that uh, maybe you're trying to get a, a file right um, so you're gonna be a client here making a request to the server and then it'll respond back with something okay So this basically, again, talks about what I just mentioned. You're talking about uh, a service request and then the response, right? So the client's making a service request uh, and the response is provided by the server, okay? It doesn't maintain an open connection, uh, like something you might be uh, doing uh, at home, right? So you're talking about the internet, something that kind of scales. There's a lot of people that's on the internet. Uh, so they're going to open up. Uh, to make a, a request uh, and a response very quickly and then it will move on uh, to the next request uh, and response. So there's a whole bunch of these going on at the same time. Okay. Uh, so because of that, like it says here, uh, this approach means the server can handle many different clients at a time. You don't want a client uh, to be holding on to the connection to the server and that basically locks out everybody else. Right? That doesn't really scale. Okay. So as it says here, the server is only busy for as long as it takes to perform your request. Right? Um, you might hear some something called denial of service. Um, so that's something where a whole bunch of uh, different uh, requests are flooding a uh, server uh, to the point where le legitimate requests are not going to be able to get fulfilled. Uh, so that's something that is uh, what they call a denial of service attack. Okay, so this just kind of draws out the different types of relationships. Um, but basically all it's saying is that uh, any number of computers uh, can be making requests of different servers all around. So you can have a server that's providing a lot of responses to all these different clients here. 
uh, at the same time this client could be making a whole bunch of different requests to all these different servers. Uh, again, like I mentioned, um, it seems like you have a continuous connection uh, to the server, but in practice you don't. Right? You wouldn't want that to happen because, like I said, it's going to block out all the other clients that are trying to make requests. Um, so you want this idea, of what they're saying is a, a persistent connection. right? So you want to simulate that. Um, and so basically you're going to make these type of requests and there's going to be some information stored uh, and I'll show that in a second here uh, in terms of cookies right so that's what cookies are about right um, we're sort of evolving uh, a little bit away from that as especially if you start to look at things like HTML5 uh, but for the most part cookies are a pretty common thing right now uh, it's probably still going to be there for a while uh, so basically it stores information so that you can continually go back and forth with a server and it simulates and makes you feel like you have a continuous uh, interaction with them instead of having like a, a stream of like uh, you know requests and responses. All right. So uh, as it says here, it stores uh, a bit of information uh, for each request to contain information about the interaction. So it'll use that to uh, continue your conversation uh, with the server. Okay. So here we're talking about IP addresses. Uh, so that's uh, internet protocol addresses. Okay. Um, so all these different things here is what they call IP address. Okay. Um, so Right here, they're talking about IPv4, version 4. Uh, so it's a series of numbers like this, uh, four numbers, uh, one by each, uh, separated by dots. So exactly what you see up here. Uh, so for the range of numbers or range of addresses that you can address, uh, it accounts essentially for billions of, of IP addresses. Okay? And if you heard of uh, you know the different things historically you used to basically just have like computers as your IP address so various computers that are connected to the internet uh, but uh, when you get into like this internet of things like basically every almost everything has an IP address right so you talk about like in your house maybe you have like smart devices various smart devices that are hooked up to the internet all of them are gonna have IP addresses so you're gonna you're going to probably uh, need something bigger uh, than what you have here. Okay, so uh, before we get to that, let's look at this. So you have number of IP addresses of your favorite uh, websites. And I, the point they're trying to make is that you're probably not going to go around and remember all of these IP addresses, right? So Another point here is IPv6. So you remember here, IPv4. So <clears throat> Internet Protocol version 6 allows us for 128-bit addresses, uh, which is <clears throat> much more than the IP version 4, uh, which is only 32 bits. Okay, uh, So this is an example of what you can get with IPv6, Okay, version 6. So you think about like um, you know going through different levels of your, your addresses. So it starts from a higher level and it works its way down uh, to like a specific point, right? So in this case, it's almost like you know look at the address uh, for your house or something, right? So in this case, uh, it's using 227, 2727 Thomas Road, right, on your street address. Um, so it's uh, trying to go down to the lowest level all right and it starts from the highest level so I'll show you that in a second okay so you have something called the top level domains right and let me come back to here so I was saying you don't remember these right so you have something uh, let's say google.com or whatever right um, actually let me let me see what this IP is so I'll go back to here let me go back to our browser
going very slow. Oops, took long too long to respond. I wonder what the IP address was. Alright, well that didn't work, but technically you should put in like a IP address and it should come back uh, with something, okay? But as you can see, I would I would basically type in whatever, right? So let's say Google.com. Right, so that's it, right? So I'm not gonna punch in like a like an IP address, but you should be able to punch an IP address and it will come back with something. Um, so that's the whole idea of these domain name servers and, and whatnot. But let me come back to here, I'll hop around a little bit here. So top level domain uh, would be at the end, right? So that's why you see things like .edu, uh, you've probably seen things like Rutgers.edu and stuff like that, right? Uh, .com, like Google.com, whatever, uh, or .net, um, .mil, .gov, right? So white, whitehouse.gov and stuff like that, right? So that's like at the end of your uh, your address. Okay, so it used to be in the past uh, they only had stuff like .com, .edu. Gov, um, but uh, they've also been expanding that right because there's been more and more people that want to have uh, domains uh, so that's been expanding so now you see things like with uh, with different countries and uh, there's other stuff that like you see here that's been added okay and so here's an example of a domain name right so you have from the right is the highest level, so this is .edu, right? So that's educational domain. Uh, let me walk my work my way back the other way. So now you have Washington, right? So this is University of Washington. So it's edu is like this whole big thing, right? Uh, wide, uh, it's like a big. It covers a lot, right? You can imagine. Um, and then Washington, uh, in front of that, basically brings it down to like which particular. Uh, edu, which particular school in this case, right? So it could have been Rutgers, it could have been whatever, right? Um, so that's working its way back down to Washington, right? Now, but within Washington University, there's obviously like a lot of different uh, departments, let's say in Washington University. Uh, so that's why you have this CS, uh, so computer science, right? And then this is the actual name of the computer, okay? And then you have HTTP, okay? Uh, you might see stuff like on like e-commerce sites or whatever. It might be HTTPS, right? So <clears throat> a little bit more secure. Um, actually, a lot of stuff is HTTPS now. Um, but my point here is that <clears throat> it's like I was saying before. You start off at the higher level and you work your way down to the specific computer. Uh, so it's almost like when you look at the United States, let's say. So you start off with the country. You go down to the state. You go down to the town, and you go down to your specific address. Uh, so it starts like that. Um, so from high to low. Okay. Uh, so this tries to explain what I just uh, what I just talked about. So edu, right? So that's the big cloud here, right? Uh, and then within that, there's many different universities that have a .edu domain, right? So you have in this case Princeton, then you have Washington. And then within Washington, you have different departments, right? So you have this Astro here, and then you have CS for the computer science. And then you have the specific computer within here. So that's how it works its way from the top down uh, when you look at uh, your, um, your domain, uh, the hierarchy for that, okay? Uh, so there's another view, kind of laying it out in sort of like a, like a tree type of format. Uh, so same thing, right? Here's the EDU, right? It goes down to Washington, uh, goes down to CS, and it goes down to SPIF, right? Uh, so this is the lowest level of detail. This is like a specific computer, and then it works its way all the way up to the top here. Okay. So I mentioned this earlier: domain name server. Sir, uh, this is uh, the key point here. Like uh, like I mentioned before, you never really want to memorize this 
right? You're not gonna walk around and memorize this. Hopefully this works. Let me see if I can punch this guy in there. Um, I wonder why I can't get any of these IP addresses to work. Um, but anyway, you should be able to punch that in. In any case, uh, these domain name servers means you don't have to memorize this, right? All you have to do is punch this in, uh, and it will know. The computer doesn't know this, obviously. So the computer, the domain name servers helps it uh, by mapping it to this IP address. So this, this is how it knows the address or where to go to on the internet. Okay, um, let, me, uh, let me try to, I know this lecture is running longer than usual, but let me just continue on and try to finish this off in one shot. Um, so you have this local area network and wide area network, okay? So you can think of like these things here as maybe your local area network, and then the wider picture as like the wide, uh, uh, the wide area network. Right, so that's how you kind of look at it. So your local area network could be something like, uh, you know, wired up your network wired up in your dorm or your computer lab or something like that. The wide area network would be something like uh, what is Rutgers University connected to uh, across the United States, right? So you're going to connect up to all these other networks via uh, the wide area network. So the local area, the local area networks uh, are basically local to your building. Uh, let's say, um, or to your local area, and then that comes together for your wide area networks. Uh, so TCP IP, uh, this is, stands for Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. Um, the best way to think about this uh, is you have this message here, so you're sending, uh, in this case they're using an example of a novel, you're sending it to your publisher using postcards, right? These postcards are equivalent of packets, right? So little packets, uh, you send them. Uh, there is like this idea of like you send all these little postcards and then at the other end, they know how to put all these postcards back together uh, into your novel, right? Um, uh, so ethernet, uh, that's just uh, the, the wire, to connect uh, everything, um, okay. Uh, okay. So basically, all they're saying here with this hard with this network, right, uh, is that uh, you don't want everybody kind of shooting out their messages at the same time. Uh, so basically, one person is. Uh, telling the story, everybody else is listening, um, and then uh, someone else will, will take it after they're done speaking. Okay, um, so this is like what I was saying here, here's your campus, here's your local area network, uh, you connect through an ISP, internet uh, server, um, internet gateway, and then into the internet, right? At your house or the, let's say, local shop or something, uh, you have this modem, Right, you connect up to your internet service provider, internet gateway, and out to the internet. Uh, so wireless, uh, Wi-Fi, <clears throat> as it says, a variation of the local area network. Uh, so to, this is just a protocol, um, 802.11. Uh, you use a router, um, but the router is connected physically to the ISP. Right, so the Wi-Fi, you connect up to your router, and then the router connects up to the ISP, and that goes out to the internet, um, and uh, basically sending and receiving. Okay, that's the Wi-Fi. Um, so here's the Wi-Fi picture. Right, you have the modem, you have a router, your computer, and your your smartphone, your laptop. It's all connecting up into this router, into the modem, and into the internet. And 
here's the various terms that you should try to understand uh, for this chapter. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, and we'll catch you for the next lecture soon.